Peace and blessings, and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. If you're looking to open your wallet to take in money instead of paying debt, please contact Transparent Credit Repair at www.transparentcreditrepair.com. Or you can call them at 862-250-5122 and tell them Heritage Hip Hop referred you and receive something very special with the offer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to say for the first time we have a returning guest to the show, a friend of the program. Salute the Notes 82 for coming back to the program. And on this episode, we talk about his classic project. That's right. You heard me say it. Classic. Is hip hop your cup of tea? Yeah, for me it is. And I understand that there's many types of forms of hip hop, whether it's boom bap, trap, you got the West Coast laid back, you got the bluesy Southern style, you got that cold hard bass from the East, you know what I'm saying? I mean, whatever it is, there's many types of hip hop and many types of views that we get, many types of ways the music hits us. And on this episode, we're gonna celebrate Watch The View the classic project from Notes 82. But it's not about me talking. I would rather you sit back, relax, hearing what Notes 82 has to say about East New York, Brooklyn life, and how he created such a phenomenal project and what he wants us to all get from it. That's right, y'all. We only talking greatness right here on Heritage Hip Hop. So everybody pay attention, and after this interview, I'll follow up with the rest of my commentary as we celebrate this great project. Peace and blessings, and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. And for those of you who pay attention, I got a friend of the platform on. I could finally say that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody has come back and came back strong with a game changer. Reintroduce yourself to the people for the first time if you're late. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Note 82. Hey, man, it's a pleasure to get to talk to you again. I got a big smile on my face, and you know how we get down with these interviews, but since this is interview number two, you know I have to come, I tell you I come a little different. You know that? <laughs> of course, man, of course. How have you been other than that, though? How, how, how's, been, how's the journey been since the, the, the last time we spoke when you just first released No Justice, No Peace? Um, it, it was pretty good. No Justice, No Peace was moving. Um, and then I got some, um, you know, some some unexpected news. My aunt being in the hospital, um, and they said that she had COVID. They said she was going to improve. Um, before I knew it, they said she was going to be out the hospital in two weeks. And then, you know, it turned for the worse, and she had passed away, man. So um, the journey's been it's, – it's been up and down. But, you know, after that happened and knowing she had, you know, peace with, peace with God and she was, you know, a godly woman, it's been a hell of a ride, man. It's, it's Watch the View has done uh, phenomenal. It has done phenomenal wonders for my life, too, also. You know, so it, it's been shaky, but, you know, right now it's actually set. It's going on the way I, I wanted it to go. So this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast is dedicated to not only Notes Aunt, but to everybody who lost people to COVID-19. We're going to make sure we give y'all something that's upbeat and something that is meaningful and not just a bunch of words so with that being said my man last time you came on like i said no justice no peace drop and the notes ep dropped so mm -hmm. i was rocking that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. even on your splash i had the like, you know, 808 on ep little song on there you know get people ready like yo my man got some you know he got he got some talent you need to check him out and then as time went on uh, i checked out suicide music and timeless you know what i'm saying and i'm mm -hmm. like you know my man's keeping busy. What what was what was the build up to release the album on Watch the View and how was the music you were putting out or, or had out preparing you for that release? Um so um I was already geared up with no justice, no peace. Um, but you know, for me it was more or less I was working behind the scenes getting this project together and uh, my mindset was uh, I already knew in my mind the 82 EP was to get you, was to kind of get you guys a little bit, you know, just to fill your belly just a little bit because I already knew what I was coming with with Watch the View. And um, the mindset was just, I think a lot, not a lot of people slept on me. I'm not going to say slept on me because I think people know I have the talent to rap, 
but I didn't think people knew I had the talent to make a phenomenal masterpiece. And I just couldn't hold out. I wanted to wait with this project to like got the last of, last of the year, but then I was like, you know what? Sometimes you just got to shoot the shot and just put it out there, and that's what I did, man. And let's just, just put it out there. Watch the view is a phenomenal project. You know what I'm saying? But the way the album is constructed is the purpose of this interview because I had to go into my bag to go deep into this one. So this was dope. All right? Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's let's start from let's start from the the beginning. Okay. Was this album conceptualized from being a nineties hip hop fan? Because even the first single seems to be a throwback to who you are today representing the old hip hop of the nineties. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Okay. So understanding that, shining, you know what I'm saying? We we talking about that. You know, we got the video out and everything. Yeah. Why was it important for you to establish where you come from at the beginning of this project? Um, I just think a lot of artists is kind of for me it's embedded in me. So I don't think artists forget where they come from, but for me but for me I I feel like people need to know my beginning. Mm-hmm. And I'm not afraid to let people know that I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from East New York, and I'm, I'm, I'm New York City, but I'm Brooklyn to the day I die. So I have to let people know. And it's a part of my roots. I want people to understand where I started from, and it wasn't a bad thing. Sometimes you have to have that start that you have has to be at the bottom for you to get to the top. So I never, you know, ever, and I think on any project, I'm going to let you know where I'm from. That's just a part of just a part of me, and every project that I put, I'm gonna let you know from East New York, Brooklyn. See, Brooklyn is a, like I said, it's a whole other city. It's a whole other world. Cause everybody exactly. knows New York, but <laughs> Brooklyn is Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And, and and when you have the respect of the borough, of the boroughs to recognize your talent, it's always important to represent where you're from. Correct? Yes, it is. Yes, I was talk. I was, I was I was I was talking to a, an a MC. You may know her name is Lulu. Sound familiar? Oh, I love that. That's my sis right there, man. Yeah, I love, I love, I love Lulu. I, I was, I was fortunate to have Lulu on Heritage Hip Hop as well in her mm-hmm. prior situation. And Lulu, when she talks about you on her posts, she always gives you that shout out and that nod to let the people know you're nice. When building yeah. up to make your statement, what does it mean to have other MCs ready for you, just like you're trying to get the world ready for you? You said, like the feeling. How does it feel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Um, I think it's 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 very important. Um, not just for me getting that that nod from other MCs, but it's important for me to give that support to people. And here's my thing: it, it's a lot of people that I don't even know from a hole in the wall that I give them, that I pay them homage and I give them their flowers because if I like your music, hey, man, you're 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 in the box with me. That's how I feel. Um, right. So it's very important that you do that. I think in, in back in those days, yes, it was a lot of competition, but at the end of the day, we're all in it for the same mission, and that's to spread our talent across the globe. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, it's very important in the culture. I think that is what, that's what unites the culture, and that's what makes the culture not have a stain. That makes the culture stay positive and not negative. Because sometimes it's not all about comp- competitive and competition. It's all about showing love. You understand what I'm saying? Because we all have a common goal. We love hip hop, so why not we all do it in in a positive in a positive light? And, and that's a good thing. Isn't competition a way to show love too? Though I mean, let, let's be real. You are you are you are you are a track spitter. So like, if you did a song with somebody else, of course you want to make sure you show up just as much as that person shows course, up too. Of course. Okay. I'm gonna show you love, but I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still show up on this track. We not we not gonna play that. <laughs> We but then let's talk about one of them features. Let's get into that because Cocaine Drip was another whole nother feel when it came to the album. Because you go, you go classy jazz, right? But then Cocaine Drip takes me back to the style of Nas, AZ, Mafioso type Queen, yes. Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? It's a homage throwback to the style with an updated twist to it. Talk yes. about Cocaine Drip and why that track is a standout on your project. 
Oh, that's a standout because it's just on the feature that I have on that with Cameron J. We built a rapport with each other last year. Um, and that report came from my guy. I think I mentioned this to you before, my guy, um, Jason Bourne, who had passed away um, earlier in the year, and he brought us together, and we always said we wanted to do music together. And for me, when I pick tracks, um, I don't have a lot of features, but I said on this project I wanted to do something different. So I wanted to bring the AZ and Nas factor. So you're actually following me in a good way. So I wanted to bring that factor. So I think Cameron J fit that whole mold. I did the chorus. I, I let him hear my first verse, and he was like, yo, no, I got to get on this. You, you want me on it? I said, yeah, that's what I'm calling. I'm reaching out. And it just was, it's just like one of those mo- moments where you just let the doors open in the studio, and it just it just happened. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Magic just happened. So that that was a great experience. That was That's actually one of my favorite, favorite tracks off of my album. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a statement maker. I mean, like I said, the way the album is constructed – it seems like you did. It seems like you did a throwback album today, mm-hmm. because the way the first seven songs come on, it's like it, like I'm listening to a cassette tape. It's like the whole theme was fit, and then mm-hmm. when I flip the tape over and, and and I feel like Daydream is the beginning of Side B or something. It's like mm-hmm. a go, it's like the a world reopens and Cocaine Drip was like the statement of that side. Yeah, it was. Did you- did you put this album together like you were trying to make Cuban Links all over again, or or or, or Volume One or Volume Two, where you wanted a, the cassette feel of a complete feeling and a change to bring you back to a new understanding of the album? Funny that you say that. Um, to be honest with you, I love these stories about about projects. So the project was thirteen, was actually 13, 13 songs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was actually mm-hmm. thirteen songs. And at first, it was supposed to be 20 songs that I was going to do, correct? So you got to think about it. What you say is, you're the first person that actually feels like you picked my brain and just knew what I wanted to do. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that and I because it was going to be 20 tracks. But then, you know, I'm in the studio and um, my engineer was like, yo, no, that might be too many. You know, so we went with the 13. Um, I did the track listing. Um, I wanted it to be... I wanted it to flow. So you had side, uh, with Watch the View, you had side A, then you had side B. Because if you think about it, the, the side B was totally different from side A. And that's what mm-hmm. I wanted to do. I wanted to bring you back. Like, it was an intro to the album, but then it was an intro to the second half of the album with Daydreams. Keep that in mind. We'll circle back to that. Because I think this this EP or album or project, whatever you want to call it, this project was a growth project. I think yeah. most people on their first project went to show the world they can rap. Yeah. And then after that first project, that's when you start, you know, playing around with, okay, I can do this. Let me flex on it and really show the world what I can do. And yeah. this was a life album. This project was not, let me put a whole bunch of songs together and see what, what, what catches. This was a, yo, walk with me through my life and see what I see. That's why mm-hmm. I watched the view title is just so meaningful. Mm-hmm. Talk about that, the title and how that goes with the um the the the, the creation of this project. Um, well, let's start with the word view. So the view is, is basically me. Um and uh the watch part is my at first it started off with my ancestors and everybody has their ancestors. I feel like our ancestors are watching us along with God. You understand what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like we have people watching us and they're keeping us on the right path. We may not can see them physically, but soulfully and spiritually, we can feel them. Um, so I felt like when I first started the project, it was my grandmother, my grandfather on my mother's side. And I felt like they were watching me, and I felt like there have been some tough situations I've been in that I was able to get out of and able to overcome, and I felt like it was because of them, because of my ancestors. Not just them particularly, but just because of people praying, my mother and father praying, people praying. So I was just you. It changed. And, but it was the same concept when my aunt died and when uh, my, my man JV died early in the year. And I felt like now I feel like, okay, I can implement them. And so now the view is me. So now they're watching the view, and the view is a beautiful thing. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what I took. I just watched everybody on a lyrical journey, but it was a beautiful thing. Nothing was negative on that album. Everything was so positive. And – being that we had we going through this whole pandemic with the you know the COVID and all that other stuff, I still felt like we could still smile. I 
feel like we were going to come out of this and we're going to overcome it. And I feel like it's still around, but we're going to come out of it. But Watch the View was going to be that staple to stop the world. When you watch, when you listen to my album, stop the world for at least an hour and 50, uh, 50 uh, minutes out of your day to say, okay, you know what, I can smile during this album. And that's what it was. I want the people to feel so good about themselves with everything going on. I love how you said that because even when you look at the cover art of the our project, you have different messages in the cover art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's let's yeah. let's break it down. Tell me if I go too deep because I love art too. You know what I'm saying? Nah, go ahead, man. You know I like this, man. Come on. So you have the cityscape in the background. Yeah. You have the neon type look where you have your name as like part of the skyline itself. So you are the yeah. city, which is crazy, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Then in very bold, you have watch the and view and script. Now, everybody knows about anything about script. When you put anything in script, that's your signature. That's you as the person or the representative that's marking this as a statement. Yeah. Then with the two doves, you have peace. You have peace in that watching and peace, and, 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 and peace at the the and above the view that says you got to, like, really sit down and really get into this. To watch it, which is an album, which is crazy because you're watching the music as it goes into your soul. And then the view is not what you see, but it's like the experience that comes from the experience itself. Am I on point? Tell me more. You're definitely on point. <laughs> you're definitely on point, man. So you're the first person that, that gets it. And, and you know what? I love people telling me, oh, the album's hot. I love it. But when you can break stuff down like that, that shows me that you're a true hip-hop listener. And you knew what I wanted to do. Now that you've got figured all of that out, you knew what I wanted to do. So this was a, definitely was a statement for me. It definitely was. From the cover art to the music, it definitely was a statement. So then let's make a statement. Talk to me about City Love and why that song is, why that song should be in everybody's headphones right now when they, after they listen to this, uh, this episode. City Love is about my wife, man. So um, yeah. but I'm going to break it down and say this. Um, I tell people that I love other, I love other cities. I don't hate on nobody's city, but New that New York City is the best city love that you can ever get. And I found my I found my one and I found my queen in the city that never sleeps. So um, this song don't have to be necessary because you're from New York City, but it could be in any city that you're from where you found your love. So go ahead and play it, man. It, it's all about your mate. It's nothing about me. It's all about her. And that's what I would tell people, man. Like, this is something you can rock with to with your mate. You understand what I'm saying? And, and make your mate feel good and, and take you back to the times when you first met. And, you know, you're still madly in love, but then you were just, you just was like wild and crazy and just, you know, and you just did so much stuff, man, to get you to this point right now. So it's just a reminder. It's just a reminder of people to say where you started from a relationship and where you guys are at now after all these years. True, and I mean, city love is different for me because, like, yeah, it's about, you know, the love that you have with your lady, but when you love the city, especially the city yeah. that never sleeps, it means you find security. That song is yeah. a security song, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it so dope to listen to because there's times when you listen to music and it's not a secure sound. It's like, okay, that's what's up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you paint a complete picture, it's like, wow. I always told people... The best songs are the songs that when somebody makes them and they play them, you walk away with something, not just the, okay, that was cool. Yes. It's like, it, it impacts your spirit. Being that this is a song about love, and hip-hop is trying to go away from love in the mainstream, but make it undercover, why do you think it's important to make that song right now and to put them in, the, in the blast it for people to know it exists? Um, because I think that's what the world needs right now. It's not even just more, more or less love between a man and a woman. I just think the world needs that type of love. They need mm -hmm. to know that, you know, you can, yes, we're going through everything, but you can still love somebody, no matter what it is, no matter their flaws, no matter what. And that's how, and that's, and if you think about life now, is that kind of how, like, our relationship is. Sometimes you look past people's flaws. Sometimes you, you, you know what I'm saying? You don't care about that. Sometimes you just say, look, this person has a good heart. Yeah, they have all these flaws, but you know what? I can work. I can build with this person. I can build a whole new life and a, you know a future with this person. So that that that's what I think. That that's what I think it is. You know. Where everybody we're talking to Notes eighty two, who released a phenomenal project called Watch the View out right now, and, and talking about 
love a lot of a lot of love in the world that's missing is people have a lot of they, they don't love themselves. Yeah. Self self love is something that I think is really um falling off in the world where we have more prejudice and racism because people want to be over somebody and that's not love. That's evil. No, it's not. That's evil. That's we have people we have people committing suicide because they don't feel yeah. good enough. Uh-huh. You have two songs on this album that really delves not into suicide but into self-love. And I want to talk about those because those are two of the most important songs on the album. I want to talk uh-huh. to you about Perseverance and Fly High. Yes. Let's talk about Perseverance first. And it was you said it's one of the hardest songs you had to write. It definitely was. What was the what was the therapy that writing um, Perseverance did for you? Um, it was a feeling of I wanted to let go of pain. So if you hear in there, I'm talking about my man JV. Um, and I just had wrote that the week that he was in the hospital. Um, okay. And it was just more like I wasn't talking in the sense of his life, but I was talking in the sense of my life. But everybody can relate to it. The teachers told me that I never win. You know what I'm mm. saying? So that's mm. the first line that I said. The teacher told me that I would never win. That was that was a true story. I had so many teachers in high school that told me, you're never going to win. You know why? Because you don't apply yourself. And you know what? I didn't take that as disrespect. I took that as motivation. And I said, you know what? I will never, ever have somebody else tell me that I'm not taking life serious. It don't matter if it's school. It doesn't matter if it's work. Nobody ever is going to tell me that. Yeah, so I predicated myself on perseverance, and that's what made me persevere this whole time. But you know what? What you're saying is it's all about self-love. You have to love yourself in order for you to say, you know what? I'm not going to have somebody else tell me to do that. Because if I love myself enough, I won't fall into that trap again of saying, look, uh, you know, school ain't for me. I'm just going to half ass it. No, life is not supposed to be half ass. You're supposed to live life to the fullest. And, and that means you got to get out there and you got to get it no matter what. So, that song was very personal for me um, because I, it, it's the little jewels in there that I was giving people. So I hope people picked up on the jewels, and that describes why No 82 is who he is today. Yeah, because that, that song to me is – that song should be the theme of Black Lives Matter, the movement, not the, not the organization. I ain't beat for that. But yeah. when it comes to the movement, many people of color, especially young black men, Young Hispanic men, young East Indian, West Indian men. The thing that we hear so much is, you're good to a point. Yeah. Or, or, you're, you're good for your kind. And I think it's important for us to hear songs like A Perseverance in the same vein as the, um, Sky's the Limit, as the same as the Nas I Can. It's really, it's really important why I put those two songs there like that in a, in, in, in a minute, and you'll see it. Because with Sky's the Limit, it was a person telling you, I've been through crap, but I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. Through perseverance, it's like, yo, life is hard, but I'm here. Mm-hmm. And with Nas I Can, it's like, life is hard, and you will be. So the song doesn't say, woe is me. It talks about the come up and how everyone has a chance to come up because if I can do it, let me motivate you for the come up. Why is hip hop missing the come up today and going towards the turn up, you think? I'm just going to say this era is spoiled, man. It's very Mm. spoiled. Um, And I think with us, we've seen hard from all the artists that came up because most of the artists that we love coming up, Yes, they had the jury. Yes, they had the ring. They had the cars, but they still were living in the projects, man. You get both of these. You get most of these artists now. They probably live out in the suburbs. I gotta create some type of image to make it seem like I'm free. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that's where the game has changed. Um, the money, the money, yes, because the money has gone up when you sign artists to these deals now. You understand know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I just think that now it's more money driven, a more money driven culture than it is the culture itself now. That's what it really is. You understand know what I'm saying? Because you don't hear a lot of a lot of people talking about the culture um in this time. You hear a couple of artists, remember back in our day you had the Chuck D's, you had the Rock Kims, you had the Big Dad. They were all talking about, you know, the communities and the culture 
and you know I'm not money driven. You know I got nice things, but I don't. The money don't drive me. You know what I'm saying? I do hip hop because I love hip hop. In this day and time, it's the money, and and, and and people are just doing it. They just everybody does music now. You know this, man. Everybody does music. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's tolerated, and the culture has allowed it to happen. And that's where the change is at. It's the money to me. It's the money, man. It really is. There's nothing wrong with money. Don't get me wrong. Get signed to a deal. Get your family out the hood. But at what cost are you going to be yourself? Because you're signing your soul away when you sign these labels now. Are they going to allow you to talk about things that I talk about? I doubt it. I doubt that. Because they don't want to hear that. It's funny that you say that because I was just watching the Michael Jordan 30 for 30 episode with about the Dream Team. And, and, and what, you, what Michael Jordan said about how he didn't want to sign with Nike, he wanted to sign with Adidas. Yeah. And his endorsements was, I didn't let the money drive me. My game is what drove up the money. Yeah. And it seems like today a lot of people are letting the game dictate their money instead of their talent dictating their money. Their money. You, exactly. You hit it. Yes, yes, that's correct. That's the, that's the thing. That's the best thing I've heard all day, to be honest with you. Wow. But see, that goes to the title track of the album, Watch the View, because we're going to go back to Fly High. But okay. even in the title track of Watch the View, it's like, you're actually, I remember Coogee Rap, Roll to the Riches, when the little boy's like, I want to be just like you. He's in the chair like, no, 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 you don't want to be like me, because I yeah. did something different. It seemed like Watch the View is that type of song where it's like, yo, it's not about me. Enjoy that sound, and now pick up the pen and write your story. Am I correct? Yes, it is. <laughs> Remember what I said. Watch me because I'm watching you in that song. You see, you see I love this interview. I love this interview, yo. <laughs> yo, this is great. Mad because I, yeah. I made it out. Mad because I made it out. You should change your route. Like, I'm telling you, man. It's not me bragging. Really? It's just more or less me telling you. Like, this, I'm giving you the blueprint on what you need to do to go forward. That's what right. I'm doing in that song. So it's like people don't understand these lines. Like, we break it down a lot. That's why I break down these lines and tell them, man, because I've changed my route. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. And, it, and you know what? That's a true story. That's nothing to mm. think about that. Like, a lot of friends are in, and it's not even them saying it to me. It's through their actions and the way they go about doing things. Because the phone calls went from before Watch the View, the phone calls were there. Now that Watch the View is out and it's gone, the phone, I mean, the phone calls wasn't there before Watch the View. Now the phone calls are just, you know what I'm mean? saying? Like yeah. No, I said that wrong. I'm sorry, correct. My bad. No, nah, you're doing great. Keep going. <laughs> the phone calls were there, but then when Watson, you came, nobody can't bash and get success with you. It's like, oh, he's successful. I can't even bash. I can't do that. He changed. He's different. How would you even know that if you didn't reach out to me and didn't call me? Like, that's my whole thing. If you didn't call me, how would you even know that? So that's, that's, that's the problem that I have, not with the coach. That's the problem I have with our people. Mm. Because if you come out with a phenomenal project, I'm backing it 100%. And if mm-hmm. anybody tells you that about No City 2, he don't support nobody, I support everybody. I don't even have to know you, but I support you. And it's bad when you have friends that you grew up with from the sandbox or some people that's younger than you and they looked up to you and then all of a sudden because you become, they think it's, they think it's success. That's what they think it is. They think it's a big, big success. I'm still living in Connecticut. I'm not living in no mansion. <laughs> I still mm. work a nine to five every day, so it's no different for me. But it's like I wouldn't do that to you. I would be a true friend before the before you were successful, and after you were successful, I'm gonna still be a true friend. But you know what? That's the difference between love and phony. And and one thing that we have to understand, everybody doesn't know love, not because they don't know themselves. It's maybe because they haven't been growing up in that loving environment. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that brings me back to the song Fly High. Because you, you intro that song about talking about, and we know from everybody who has not listened to the first interview after this, go back, listen to those 82 first interview on Heritage Hip Hop, where he talks about his love for his father and how his father helped raise him and his family. Yes. And then in Fly High, you actually tell your dad's story from being in the South and then coming up to Jersey, I mean, Jersey, um, New York. And he's a mm-hmm. country boy coming to the city like who had to learn the game. But then in learning the game, he was brought to God and instilled in you 
the principles or qualities it took not only to make you a man, but also to make you an MC. How is your dad an MC, and how is he the real MC of that song? Man, my father's story is phenomenal, man. Um, to actually have somebody, and even not even, his mother's two days, they're still living, they lived in old times. But just think about a, a, a young boy in those times, back in those days, man. It was it was bad, man. We wasn't free, you know. I mean, we probably were free, but then at the, at the end of the day, we wasn't really free. You couldn't really do anything. I remember my father told me a story one time, so I had to tell his story. Um, the first job he ever got straight out of high school, and this is what kind of made him move to New York City, um, he was a waiter. And you know they had the blacks and the whites. You know how that goes back in the day. Yeah. And he yeah. spilled uh, a drink on them, on a, on a white lady. And yeah. right there and there, he quit. But he said he, went, he, he said he felt so embarrassed that he told his mother he went home, look, I, this ain't for me. I got to find something bigger and better in the big city. So for him to do that, that showed courage. You understand what I'm saying? That's like, hey, I don't want to do this. I don't want to sit here and feel the way I feel because I spilled a drink on a white lady. But if I spilled a drink on a black woman, nothing would have happened. But I, I had the need to say, look, I got to quit this job right now because they might try to do something to me. They might try to lift me. They might, they might try to beat me. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, uh, my father's an MC because – of his journey and his journey to becoming a pastor. And him becoming a pastor, a lot of people feel like, oh, some of these pastors is But I can tell you this. I'm, if people are a fan of No City 2, you will be a fan of my father because he has the same principles as me. I'm not going to tell you a lot. I can't. That I can't recover from. I can't do it. I can't tell you a lot that I can't recover from. And that's something that I have learned from him. So hearing him go out and not care about the money as a pastor and just wanting to teach the flock, Man, where do you think I got it from? I got it right from them. And that's what I want to do. The money is fine. If the money comes, it comes. If it doesn't, I'm still doing the thing that I like to do, and that's giving a message to my people through the culture that I, that I love so much. And I respect that. And that's one thing I wanted to tell you. I want to tell you as a man, that song, Fly High, meant so much to me because we have a similar story there, and I'm not going to make this about me. I'm going to just say my father came from the South, too. and he was there when Bull Connor in them in Alabama was turning dogs on people and pulling the hoses on people. He was there. Yep. So, I mean, all I like to tell you is this. That story resonates with me because it's a kinship of we've come so far, and even though we have so far to go, whether we took a step, an inch of a step, or a giant leap, we're moving. And that hope from our, our, our ancestors is what's pushed us forward. So that song was a forward movement, movement for not only me, but uh, I pray it inspires everybody who hears it as well. So salute to you for making a classic in Fly High. Thank you, man. Yeah, but I mean, for everybody out there listening, we can break down this entire album, but we're not because we want you to go listen to it. So with that being said, Notes, I'm going to say everybody out there that's listening, Notes 82 dropped a phenomenal project called Watch the View, which is available everywhere in all streaming media. Stream the hell out of, out of it. It's great. But instead of streaming it only, you're going to love this album. I'm begging you, purchase the album because this album is worth your time. And like I say on all the other interviews I do, if, if, if let's just say a meteor hit damn ESPN and all the damn internet went out, if you're going to need music in your downtime, if you don't have internet, you don't have enough, you can't stream. So purchase the music so you have it because the classic song from the album Daydream will be in your playlist that you own and you can hear it every day. Let's talk about the classic Daydream. I know that song is the song that opened up everybody to you. Am I correct? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Classic. Let me say it again. Classic. I don't care if you spell it with a C or a K. It's capital. Either way you do it, it's classic. Let's go into Daydream. How was the response to Dre Daydream when you first, you know, put it out, and how did it affect you? Man, it, it, it brought people back. They said it brought people back to college, college dropout um, in the mm -hmm. early Kanye West days in the early 2000s, and I, and I thought that was phenomenal. And then some people um, even took it further and went back to Lupe Fiasco's Daydream song. Um, yeah. So it, 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 it made me feel good, man. But I knew that was the one on an album that was phenomenal, but I knew that one would stand out more than any other songs on there. And um, I definitely wanted to give people 
that college dropout vibe. I'm not even gonna lie to you, man, because that is an era that I loved and 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 I love Kanye as a rapper. Now some you know, outside of rap, we ain't gotta talk about that. But um as far as the rapper himself, he inspired me so much in the early two thousands, man, because he just had that attitude, look, I'm somebody that's coming from the bottom, but I'm here to come rise to the top and come out and act like a beast. And I, I feel like that's what he did, and I feel like that's what I'm doing now. I feel like I'm gaining my stride, and I feel like I'm about to kick down the door. And um, But a lot of people, man, they love Daydream, man. They, you know, Daydream is on a lot of playlists on Spotify. Um, it's actually streaming numbers. is actually at 55.7K right now. So that album is, is smoking right now. Well, being that Heritage Hip Hop has services, I want that song to be part of our services. And um, part of our services is that we work with artists to help promote and brand their brand. And that song I actually picked to be on Heritage Hip Hop Playlist number four, which is a playlist I share with members of our website, and I send it around the world for people to listen to. Wow. I had, when I first heard Daydream, I said, that's Heritage Hip Hop right there. So I picked that song out to go on our playlist that we send out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a streamer. I hate streaming. Believe me, everybody up there, I don't even like water. Streams, I don't like none of that shit. Believe me. <laughs> but <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to music, they say word of mouth is the best form of advertising. Yeah. I believe in that. I believe in going to somebody like, yo, you know who knows 82 is? You ever heard the song Daydream? Nah, fam. Oh, man. You ain't no heritage hip hop. So I use your song to promote my brand. And I thank you for making that song because... Yo, who has not said, I got to leave this day job? <laughs> that, that <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is true, man. Yeah. Who has said, who has not expressed wanting to do something, but until they do, it's in their mind, and they're going to live that dream in their mind until they make it a reality. Mm -hmm. That song is the working man's classic. Exactly. I mean... I mean, so salute to you for making that. I'm you know saying, like, that song got me excited. When I heard the album, I was like, this song is crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was good. So and understanding that what Watch the View is, mm -hmm. there's one more song I want to actually talk about that um, it made an impact, and the song is called Count It Down. Ooh, okay. Tell me about Count It Down. I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I just wanted to show people that I got bars, man. <laughs> okay. I wanted to show people that I had bars, but you know what? That song probably was the most, the funnest song that I had on the album, that I did on the album. Okay. I had fun with that song. I really had fun with that song, and I wanted to do something different, and I wanted people to look at me and say, damn, those two hitting a lot of lanes. So I felt like I, I felt like I went out of my lane on this one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean... KRS One said, and I use this quote for certain people, not everybody, because everybody's not fit for this title. Yeah. KRS One said, a rapper raps about life, and the MC raps to you about your life. I think this is the album that solidified you notes as an MC. Because hey, man. I you, that. you took it to a place where you could bring people into your life, but if they're really paying attention, you're really telling them about who they are as well. And whether you're counting it down or we talk about the song Dreams to Reality or Daydreaming, yeah. we talk about flying high or persevering, it's all about being the best man or woman you can be and the inspiration you give to others through your story. So this is the album where I can say Notes 82 is an MC and not a rapper from Brooklyn. So salute to you. I appreciate that, man. Now, you don't know so, how much that means to me. Hey, man, hey, 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 hey. I'm, I love hip-hop, man, as you can tell, so... Yeah, yeah, that's just my yeah. feeling. And um, for everybody out there listening, this is Notes 82. Please drop your um, social media so everybody knows how to contact you and how to find that classic. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah I said it. Classic, by the way. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is Notes 82, man. You can find me on Facebook at Notes 82, N-O-T-E-S-E-I-G-A-T-Y-T-W-O on Facebook. On Instagram, you can find me at Notes 82 underscore. And on Twitter, you can find me at Notes U33. And you can find my classic, because he said it here, Kareem said it here. On classic. Hip hop is like mm -hmm. classic. You can find my classic on all digital media platforms, anywhere, Titan, Spotify, Apple Music. You can find it all over the world, man. And 
the best place to find it is in your computer after you purchase it. So make sure you exactly. buy it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And with that being said, I have a surprise for you, notes. What's that? Everybody out there listening, every August, Heritage Hip Hop does an award show. Mm -hmm. We give awards out to people who really take the culture to the next level. We have an Artist of the Year. We have the Govmatic Award of the Year. And we have a Project of the Year. Notes 82's Watch the View is nominated for Project of the Year. Oh, man. This means so much to me, man. It's so, man. So congratulations. I, 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 wanted, I wanted the splasher to come out first before I did the interview, but unfortunately we're still working on it because I wanted it to look good. And my partner, BQ, Salute the Faggy's Place, our virtual assistant, he's amazing. So we wanted to make sure everything looked great so we didn't want to rush it. But Notes82's Watch the View is nominated for Project of the Year. What does that mean to you? Uh, that, to be honest with you, man, this is what, this is what I dreamed of. Of just being my project being recognized and this project and I felt like I would get to this point but I always told myself I have to make a project that's going to stand out from the rest of the people and it means so much to me man like if you don't know how much it means to me man um well, because sometimes I'm critical of myself and mm -hmm. a lot of people around me tell me you stop being like that you're dope you put the work in and now it's just all about just continuing to work and grow and and, and, and learn and, and be bigger than what you want to be. So this means so much to the man, it does. Well, whether you win or lose is not the point. So I don't want everybody out there to be, because you, know, you got people who sneak hate and sneak this on what, what happened. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even about them. The simple That's fact right. is when somebody holds you up and they recognize, like, yo, this dude right here, pay attention. I think that's the real win that many people don't really acknowledge. Everybody wants to be in LeBron and Michael Jordan and Steph Curry and stuff. But people don't really, really support the people that got them there. And the one thing that I want to say in response, in relation to that, to this album, I remember, I know you know this too, everybody goes to LeBron and says, oh, are you the next Jordan? And LeBron said, I never wanted to be the next Jordan. I wanted to be the next Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson is the one that took the NBA to the next level by being there. He may not have won a title, but he's the people's champion, and he's hip-hop to the core. So, yes. Salute to you and congratulations to you on August 29th. We'll see if Notes 82 is the winner of the Heritage Hip Hop Project of the Year. And this interview will be out before that um before that um that time, so you will be able to let people in this, listen to this and let them know before August 29th. Like yo, y'all need to do the watch for Heritage Hip Hop Awards because I want to see if we're gonna win this this um this project of the year. All right? Yeah, yeah, man, definitely. All right, with that being said, everybody, this is Karev, and I'm with Notes82, and it's time for the Rapid Fire Questions. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready, man. All right, so everybody who's new to this, shame on you. But if you're not, you know the deal. No yes, no questions. These are questions that's about the MC, his depth, and how he appreciates his art and the culture of hip-hop. So question number one, watch the view is going to be it already is an album project that not only signifies the change in hip hop, but it also signifies the continuance of the legacy of hip hop. What's more important to you, pushing hip hop forward or paying homage through the project that you made? Pushing hip hop forward. Mm. Explain. Um. Well, I wanted to ask, I wanted to say both answers. Um, but I think pushing the culture forward because for me, I believe that somewhere along the line, the culture kind of fell off. And I want to be that person that tells people, hey, man, look, we still can keep our balance and say, hey, we can keep hip-hop going strong if we just make sure we do music the way I put out Watch the View. Not the same music as Watch the View, but the format of hip-hop and making people gravitate to your music. So that's why I would say push the culture forward because um, I think somewhere along the line, a lot of people um, stopped learning about the culture and they just started making things up and saying, hey, this is the culture. And we can't do that no more. We can't afford to do that anymore. Mm, I believe that too. Question number two. When you make a great album, the visuals have to be just as on point as the song itself. So a Shining Star, 
like we said, pushing it forward or paying homage. You paid a lot of homage in that. Mm-hmm. But even still, when you look at movies like Beyonce's Black is King, I don't know if you've seen it. Yes. I said, I said Beyonce and Jay-Z and them, they're not the stars of that project. The actual stars are the wardrobe people, the directors, and the choreographers because the look of that album, that visual album, is what sells it. If, if, if Watch the View was turned into a visual album, Right. What is the what is the view that you want the listener or the watcher to focus on to realize that not only is this is music, it's an experience as well? Um, how beautiful the sky looks at night when the moon comes up, when the sun comes up, when it's um overcast outside, when it's storming outside. You have different views you can look at on a daily basis. It's just like the weather. Some days it might rain, some days it might be sunny, some days it might be cloudy, but it's always something that stands out in the view of whether it's the sun, the sun going down, the sun coming up, the moon, the rain. It's always something you can look at when you talk about the view. So I think the sky, the skylight, the skylight at night, the skylight in the afternoon, the skylight in the morning would be a, definitely a great visual album if watch the view was a visual album. And that's what I'm talking about because in the history of our people, Especially if we talk about nature, even if you go to the Bible, the by God it said God made the sun, the moon, and the stars for signs and seasons, and the sky actually tells the story of our lives. Whether you're in joy and there's sun, whether you're in pain and there's clouds, even if you're in peace and tranquility and there's the moon, it always gives us not only the the temperature of the world, but the temperature of our mental state as well. So here goes question number three. Where does Watch the View rank when it comes to classic Brooklyn MC albums? Ooh. Hmm. Well, it ranks, it, it ranks in the top ten. Top ten. But say that again? I, I missed that. What'd you say? I said the top ten. Woo! Okay. You braggadocious over here. You Sean P. Yeah. Sean Carter, Big Daddy Kane, you Brother Jay, you all of them, huh? Seven dwellers, we going there, huh? <laughs> yes, man. I'm going to say top ten there. Oh. And, and, and the reason I said that, but you know what? It could be anywhere when you talk about top 52 because um, everything I did on Watch the View is something that I learned from all the greats in Brooklyn, too. You know, so... Um, I can say top ten because that's the way I feel about my album, but if we want to be realistic, I could put it in the top 50 and be satisfied with that, you know, because it's all predicated off of they showed me how to construct an album from top to bottom. So um, I'm going to say top 50. I'm going to say my answer. I ain't going to say top 10 because we got a lot of great in Brooklyn. So I'm going to say top 50. That might move up a little bit, you know, watch the view. You know, we'll see what the view is at and if it's talked about 10 years from now. That's a good answer, cause that, 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 it, that's braggadocious, but it's also humility. And you gotta believe in yourself, cause if you don't, who's gonna believe in you, right? Yeah. But see, that goes to my next question, which is a very important question that I wanna ask you as an MC and as a person who contributes highly to the culture. Yeah. There are people who don't believe this is a great album because they're stuck on the boom bap sound. Mm-hmm. Of the 90s, or some people of the 80s. There are some people who say, well, lyrically, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. There are some people who say, well, beat selection, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. How important is it to hear that when you're making the album instead of always hearing the good, the good, the good when it comes to it? That's good. Um, that's a good thing. Um, you ne- I don't think anybody's perfect. So when and everybody's entitled to their opinion. So, you know, when I think about it, I never think about anybody else's opinion. I'm not trying to diss them. When I'm saying I'm creating an album, it's all about what I'm trying to give the listener. It's never what, oh, what would the fans think if I did? It's always what I'm trying to deliver, and I feel like I'm always delivering a message. So for me, um, all that stuff being said is motivation still. It's motivation to me. And um, I'm going to tell you something that's crazy about this project. I never paid attention to anybody's opinion of, watch the view when I was in, in making it. I never cared about the the, 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 the last the lashing I would get, the life. I never cared about it. I just wanted to do an album 
to say I'm proud of and I know and I know for myself that people, if you can't love this album, your heart. That's how I feel. Mm, I like that. And it's true. It's true. And if people feel a way about it, hey, it is what it is, your heart. Because you can take something. If you don't like the whole album, that's fine. But you can take something from each of these songs. Or if you take one song, but it, 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 it definitely could do something for your life. Any of these songs. Mm, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's real hip hop. Cause then everybody always says, well, that's not Illmatic. Well, who else made Illmatic? But nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or some, and, and then there's people who like hip hop on a whole other level that like Tech Nine, and that has sounds something like Illmatic. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what makes appreciating the art so good because no matter what you make, go into your bubble and come out being yourself. And the people who love it, You'll feel the real love instead of doing something just because you know people will like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love Daydream. So everybody out there, if you don't like that Daydream, you corny. I said it. He didn't. <laughs> so we got we got three more questions now before we end out the uh, conversation. So the next question is: I always ask about your dream song and your the remix and things like that. Is there another song that you want? Is there a song that you want to remix that give more life to after this project ages a little bit? Um, to be honest with you, Cocaine Drip. I want to add a couple more people on Cocaine Drip. I want to do a remix for it. Mm. That would be dope. Cocaine Drip. Okay, so Cocaine Drip, like we said, is the throwback to the mafioso style. Um, what... Who who would you be looking for to do something with? Is there somebody in your camp? Is there a certain MC? Is there somebody that you want to put, put on there? Um, if I wanted to do cocaine drip, I got an idea of I'm from Brooklyn, Canvas from the Bronx. I would want to do some of the get get um another rappers from other boroughs. So if we got Harlem, I would want to get somebody from Harlem. Um, I'm gonna just name them. I, somebody in my circle, I'm Skrilla Gambino. I would want to get him on cocaine drip. Um, if we talking about Queens, I would want to get my man Nico Tesla on it. Um. Mm. If we talking about that uh, Long Island, Nick Moody, I love Nick Moody. That's that, that white boy gets get to that man with hip hop. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we talking Staten Island. Um, we really don't know too many people from Staten Island, but just any artist that I would look to get a cocaine drip remix, man, with just the five boroughs on that man. That's deep. I think you should put Lulu on it. Hey man, they do look up, man. Me and Lulu gonna do something, man. Like I told her, I said, you know, it's time for about to start coming back outside just a little bit. Just a little bit, not too much, because that COVID is still out there. You yeah. Know, but um, definitely, I, I wouldn't have a problem with putting Lulu on anything. And I think we, are, I think we were in the works of talking about doing some song together, um, anyway. So that's definitely gonna happen. Okay. Hey man, shout out to Lulu, yo. We we gonna put it out there. Yep. Next question is this though. <sighs> How do you appreciate this album as you move forward? We always talk about what the people think. The people think this is your baby. How are you looking to see this baby mature and grow into its own man or its own thing? How do you appreciate it? I appreciate it so much, man. It's, um, it feels so good when you release a, a great album like this and you get every, not just not, I have not got not one negative person saying this album is not good. I Every single person, but I have reflection, reflection, just like you're saying, when people say, oh, that was, that was okay. That was, you know, that was cool. That was all right. You know what I'm saying? But on this one, it's everybody is like, yo, this album is dope. Like, bro, like, you took your time and you created a masterpiece. So, but for me, um, at first, when it first released, and all the love I was getting, it, it seemed unreal. And then now, mm. it's like, to get the praise and get the love, I'm numb to it now. Because mm. I, now I can consider myself that I did create a masterpiece. With you telling me this tonight, this is like God speaking to me. And you were the last person, the third person that had to tell me this, that you mm. have a classic on your hand. So now I appreciate it, not because people are saying it, but now that I got that third person saying it, and it's coming from good sources that no hip hop, I have a masterpiece, man, and I love it. And I love it, man. I really do. 
And with that being said, everybody, make sure you go get the album. Watch the view out now everywhere. And if it's not where you're at, you're somewhere you don't need to be. So make sure that you not only stream it, but make sure you purchase it because this is a landmark project in 2020 hip-hop. It came out in June, and we're in August, and I'm telling you now, it's worth your purchase, it's worth your time, your ears, your spirit, and your soul. Well, thank you. And with that being said, we've come to the last and final question of this interview. And before we ask about legacy, what is the legacy you leave on the world to make that made the world better because you did music? Okay, we're not going to ask that question. We're going to pose that question in view of the album. Mm -hmm. Ten years from now, how is Watch the View going to be recognized in Notes 82's catalog? Is it going to be the best, or did he elevate from there? And how do you how do you think how do you plan on doing such? I believe I'll elevate from here, um, but watch the view. I'm going to say this, and I got a lot more music left inside of my soul. Will be will go down ten years from now. Will still be my best body of work. And to be honest with you, if I do it, if I keep marketing, I keep promoting the way I want to promote it. I believe watch the view can be studied in college. Whoa, okay, okay, that's deep. So Watch the View is not it's going to be more than an album. It's going to be like, you may have plans to put this into a book and tell a story called Watch the View. That, that would be awesome, yo. That would be great. Yes, mm -hmm. We need to talk about that offline. So all y'all out there, y'all can't hear that. So thank you for listening to the <laughs> Chip Out Podcast tonight. What you want to say? No, you good, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with everybody out there listening, thank you for listening to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. We over 50 episodes going to 100, and this is one of the best episodes we've done. So salute to Notes 82. And with that being said, continue to support Heritage Hip Hop. Subscribe to www.heritagehiphop.com where you can hear your future favorite artists today, like Notes 82. By subscribing, you get to hear our new playlist, the Jersey Playlist 2, featuring the old 50 boys. But more importantly, you will get the Heritage Hip Hop playlist featuring Notes 82 on Daydream, classic track from a classic album. This is Correll with Notes 82. We say peace, and we out. That's right, everybody. After hearing that interview, if you do not check out the Watch the View album by Notes 82, you did yourself a disservice. Yes, the album, to me... It's on Classic Watch. It looks like it's a classic. I've listened to the album a couple times, and a lot of people like to throw out the words classic. It's a classic too often, and things have to age, and um, things have to like live with you. I'm going to say that Notes 82 made an album that's going to age with you, and because it's positive music, we're always going to need positivity, especially in the culture where too much negativity comes up. And especially in these times of racial and social injustice and COVID, it's so good to have good, positive music. Watch The View is not only good, positive music, it's life music. And if you don't understand the love life, then I don't know what to tell you. But this is a classic album that is nominated for the Heritage Hip Hop Awards on August 29th. Please make sure you stay tuned and follow us on YouTube on Heritage Hip Hop on August 29th. Information will be coming soon, of course. Follow our Instagram page. Follow our website, www.heritagehiphop.com. Make sure you subscribe to it and you'll get all the news that you need to know what's coming up when it comes to the Heritage Hip Hop Awards show. We have great people making great music out here and it's time that we celebrate them and not just wait for the mainstream to celebrate us who are not on tv every day and traveling the world there's great music everywhere and we need to bring that to the forefront with that being said this is Karev from heritage hip-hop saying thank you for taking this journey with us today please make sure you subscribe to heritagehiphop.com make sure you subscribe to all our social media on youtube facebook Instagram, hit the subscribe buttons, notification bells, alerts, everything, and make sure you comment, like, share, and, 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 and help grow the platform with us because we celebrate you, the participant, the listener, the commenter, the, the person who's doing 
what you do normally when it comes to hip hop, loving hip hop and sharing that experience with us. I'd like to give a shout out to Transparent Credit Repair for always being with us and, and helping support the show. We get to shout out, we'd like to give a shout out to Fatty's Place, uh, our virtual assistant. You know, you can follow them on Instagram, Fatty's Place, F A D D Y S P L A C E, who celebrates the ladies when it comes to to um, music in the industry, you know, mainstream and other. I'd like to give a shout out to our resident MC, Fire Jaws, who does promotion, placement, and marketing. If you're looking for someone to help you with your promotion, placement, and marketing, check out F I R E J A W S, Fire Jaws on Instagram. Shout out to two people who helped build up this program as well Lex Diamonds of Diamonds Entertainment LLC. That's D I E M E N Z Entertainment LLC and Adiar, who runs the Big A Show, which is season one is on YouTube. We're working on season two right now. And shout out to my man Nasif, yo, because we got some crazy stuff going on. And Big A uh, season two will be coming soon and it's going to be great, you know? So to everybody out there that's listening to this, I thank you so much for helping Heritage Hip Hop grow. We over 50 podcast episodes and we're going to 100 and we're not going to stop because we believe hip hop tells a story. And you as the MC or the artist or the producer or the teacher, the lawyer, anything that's in the hip hop culture, you deserve to tell your story and let the world know that you exist. So by existing, not only do we continue God's heritage in us, we support the heritage that he put in us in hip hop. And with that being said make sure you stay tuned august 29th for the award show continue to follow us we say peace and we out